Welcome to OK Hobby Time. In this video, we're continuing the Crafted Campaign series and building a bandit camp. Previously, the party stumbled on a town that seemed to be suffering from a strange plague. The mayor of the town suggested paying the local bandits a visit, as he saw them harassing the most recent person to fall victim to this deadly disease. The group traveled to the outskirts of the town and located the bandit camp. A couple of empty tents sat under a gnarled willow tree. To their surprise, there was no signs of anyone almost as if they knew they were coming. The first step is to build out the group of bandits. I searched for some models that would fit the role and found these guys sculpted by Vivictus Miniatures. 3D printing is a hobby on its own, but it's one that goes hand in hand with tabletop gaming. There's just so many models available now through 3D printing, allowing anyone to source almost anything they want. It's a bunch of fun hunting down the perfect model or bit for a build. In the case of this bandit camp, I combine a bunch of different parts from different creators to make a unique terrain piece. These tents are from Geektopia Games. And these crates are from the Lion's Tower Adventurers Guild. This chopping stump and logs are from Vivictus Miniatures. This fire pit is from Artisan Guild. And this prisoner cage is also from Vivictus Miniatures. There's something interesting about this way of crafting. It's like putting together a plastic kit, except you get to choose all the pieces that are included. I wanted to figure out the basic composition of the build before moving forwards. I used a piece of paper to sketch out my base which allowed me to arrange all my pieces in place. You probably noticed that large space in the template. I was originally going to build a wooden lookout tower, but I wanted to try something new instead, so I decided to scratch build a big tree as a focal point for the terrain piece. Something a bit creepy to match the bad guy vibe of the camp. The template was traced onto a sheet of MDF and then cut out with a rotary tool. MDF is a bit of a pain to cut, but it's worth it because of its durability and its tendency not to bend once glued and painted. I'm pretty happy with the look of this so far, so it's time to move on to the priming of these pieces. Everything is attached to a handle of some sort to prepare for airbrushing. I'm making sure to cover up my work surface, open a large window in the room, and wear a respirator. I begin priming everything with a coat of black. Followed by a highlight of white from an upwards angle to maintain the dark shadows. I base coated the tents while I had my airbrush out since these were pretty large surfaces. I then moved on to my paintbrush for all the detail work, starting with the bandits. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these guys, just a simple scheme of browns to make them look ragtag. Another benefit with 3D prints is the ability to practice on models without the fear of ruining them. Worst case scenario, you can just reprint the miniature. You could also print out multiple copies and test different schemes. I find that I can be more adventurous with my painting, knowing that I'm not at risk of ruining an expensive plastic kit. That, and the ability to print such a variety of miniatures to paint, has improved my abilities more than anything else. I always use cheap craft paint to cover the sand on my bases. It works great and saves the more expensive paint for the model itself. A clean, well-painted base is a great way of making an average painted mini look really nice. Next up, moving on to the scratch-built tree. I'll be using different gauges of armature wire to build out the main structure. This wire is really easy to work with, but it's also stiff and holds its shape. I'm using the thicker gauge for the main branch, and the thinner wire for all the smaller branches that grow from the larger one. These branches are twisted around the larger wire and trimmed to size. This process is repeated until I'm happy with the number of branches. I'm considering this a practice tree since it's not quite the shape that I wanted for the final piece. I want something that will sweep over the tents below. I begin on the final tree using my newly acquired tree building knowledge. It's going to be a gnarly willow tree that looks a bit creepy. Once I'm happy with the composition of the larger branches, 
I begin to twist on the smaller branches. Next, I'll be using tinfoil to bulk out the tree and have something for the clay to stick to. I'm keeping in mind the general way that trees grow, thicker from the bottom and getting thinner as the branches move up. I'll be using Super Sculpey to cover my armature as a final layer. I'm not worried too much about the lumps and bumps at this point, just getting a nice thin coverage. After the armature is covered, I begin sculpting out some tree detail using my tools and fingers. I've added some extra clay in certain spots to give the appearance of a twisted tree. This created a really creepy tree, perfect for a camp full of bad guys. Next, I'll be painting the rest of my camp pieces. I gave all the wood a cover of craft paint, then evened out the coating with my airbrush. I primed my tree black, then painted it the same brown through my airbrush. All the wood was given a dry brush with a lighter brown. The little camp bits were then painted, including this fire pit. Fires are always fun to paint. Just start off with a yellow and create a gradient to red, then finish it up with black on the highest tips. The prisoner cage was given a coat of brown ink to make it look grungy. The painted pieces were then put back in place in order to figure out the final composition with the newly scratch built tree. Once happy, I begin gluing everything down. Sections of the MDF base were given a coat of PVA glue, followed by a coat of coarse sand. The step was repeated until there was full coverage. The loose sand was shaken off and the glue was left to dry overnight. The sand was given a coat of craft paint. I'm making sure the paint is watered down in order to cover the sand easier. Once dried, I dry brushed the base with a gray. This will pick out the larger stones and create some variation. The base is given another coat of PVA in a more random pattern. Coarse flock is applied first. Followed by a coat of finer flock. For the weeping willow portion, I'll be using woodland scenic foliage. This stuff is great for creating hanging greenery, perfect for a willow tree. And with that done, the bandit camp is complete. A bandit appeared behind the crates and shot an arrow towards the group. It made direct contact with the group's ranger, Gwen, sending her to the floor. Two more bandits appeared from hiding spots, armed and ready to fight. The group's wizard, Jaina, conjured a fireball spell and launched it towards one of the bandits, taking him out of the fight. Fifel then appeared from out of the shadows, delivering a fatal backstab to the bandit archer. The dwarf cleric, Bobar, shouted to the group and told them that he needed to rush Gwen back to the town in order to stabilize her. The remaining adventurers surrounded the last bandit and got him to surrender. The bandit confessed he had nothing to do with the strange plague. They were only in town collecting protection money. He eventually admitted that he knew the party was coming due to an anonymous tip. Although they knew nothing of the plague, the bandit did provide details of an entrance to a location being frequented by some strange people. Having no other leads, the adventurers decided to pursue the bandit's story, bringing him along to guide the way.